Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch new spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squad up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so continuing with more talk about Dark Knight's Metal, I wanted to go back and kind of fill in some of the gaps because we had a few questions before. One of which is what happened to the Suicide Squad, and the other is where is Dark Robin, the actual son of the Batman who laughs. And those are just a couple of questions that we've had amongst many going throughout this series, and those are two of which that I'll answer here, but hopefully we can put our heads together and figure the rest out. So now, if you guys remember that origin video of the Merciless, in that video we talked about a bit more than just his origin. As usual, I reference other comics that it may connect to or bring back things from, and from time to time I also make speculations on what may be to come when issues like this one throw out little nuggets and clues. And if you haven't seen my video on that, I'll leave a link for you to check it out and then you can come back here. But one of the many things we talked about in that video specifically was a meeting that took place in Langley, Virginia, the headquarters of Argus. And it was in this meeting that Amanda Waller reported that the Suicide Squad was unresponsive and presumed dead. And the last time she made contact with them was sending them to Gotham to see about the Nightmare Batman. But after that, everyone's GPS signal went out, so she just assumed the worst. But even furthermore, throughout the different series, we find out in Wonder Woman that sometime after Batman had disappeared, but before the Merciless attacked Argus HQ, that Amanda Waller and Argus were aware of Grail hiding Darkseid and killing the children of the old gods in order to restore his power. And they weren't literally children, they're all grown, some of them thousands of years old. But I'll leave a link if you need to go back and see that one and catch up. But the way that we find out that both Argus and Amanda Waller are aware of what Grail was doing in her whereabouts is when we see an Argus team attack Grail in a remote location where she's hiding Darkseid. And so now when this took place, we know for a fact that this was before Amanda Waller ordered the Suicide Squad to go to Gotham. And we know that because she first gave an order for the Suicide Squad to come here, but before the Suicide Squad could arrive, the Argus soldiers went in anyway. And they failed miserably. But with the Suicide Squad not getting there in time and Grail being able to escape, her trail went cold to Argus Intelligence and they haven't been able to pin a location for her since. And because of the way that Grail was being tracked, Argus can only pick up her location if she gave off similar energy to that which was given off in Dark Side War. So like if she used Omega Beams, used the Mother Box to absorb the life force of the different demigods, or even if Dark Side fed and began to age, those were possible instances that Argus could track. But with all of that slowing down to nearly a dead stop, her trail went cold, and it really made no sense for Amanda Waller to send the Suicide Squad on a cold trail. And Grail also switched up her method of just killing a bunch of demigods at one time, because Darkseid's growth didn't really reflect the number of demigods she was killing to get it. So because of that and her making less kills, it also kept her off the radar of the Suicide Squad. And so now, in reference to the time frame of everything else that's going on, when Amanda Waller sent the Suicide Squad to go to Gotham, this takes place right at the beginning and kind of overlaps with the time that the Nightmare Batman were facing off with the Justice League in their own Nightmare Bat Caves. And that's really the reason why you have characters like Nightwing, Damien, and Green Arrow, and a few members of the Teen Titans, but they're really that handful of people that the Suicide Squad runs into when they head over to Gotham. And so Gotham at this point has been turned into the Riddler's Labyrinth. And it's really here where you have your Team Titans, Green Arrow, Nightwing, and your Suicide Squad kind of cross paths. And Damien's led here from an SOS signal he received from Nightwing, and that's not only how he found out there was trouble in Gotham, but it's also why he brought the Teen Titans with him. And even though they follow him there while he's riding on Goliath, like they're pretty hesitant about the situation, and mainly Beast Boy out of everybody. Because events of this scale are something you would more likely bring your big, big guns like Superman or Wonder Woman to. But remember, at this point, they both have disappeared. And so when they get in closer and they touch down in Gotham, which is now the Riddler's Labyrinth, like the best way to describe it is that 1986 movie with David Bowie, because it looks exactly like that movie. Like I'll leave a link to the trailer down in the description so you can go see that. But it has like the crazy infinite stairway that you can can get lost in and I think the name of the movie is actually Labyrinth I have to look it up but this Riddler's Labyrinth that the Batman Who Laughs had created is completely themed off of Batman and the Batman Who Laughs pretty much brought this together by recruiting different villains from Batman's rogue gallery and handing each one of them a card from his deck that was forged with metallurgy and these metal cards are what gave each one of these villains the power to make a certain part of Gotham more extravagant and exactly how they wanted it to be like. And he told them this, like when he broke them out of Arkham, he was like, hey, you're used to being in a world where there are these rules here and you gotta abide within these rules. Well, that's no more, just go crazy. And so now also, if you guys remember when we covered the origin of the Batman Who Laughs, and the Batman Who Laughs had a mysterious figure in the chair and he was telling him that the Joker card can change everything in the deck. Like this right here is literally what he's referring to. But at the same time, this isn't his only play. And we saw that with the multiple hero villains that he pulled in from all over the multiverse like that alone showed us that he has more tricks up his sleeve but this here in issue 12 of Teen Titans in conjunction with the origin story of the Batman Who Laughs it actually shows us how he's getting it done 
and that's by way of these metal cards that he possesses. But when Damien and the Titans get there, it's not too long before they come across Green Arrow, who literally saves Damien's life by the way. But he learns pretty quick that he's not going to get like a thank you or anything like that from Damien because that's just not his character. And it's hilarious because he literally saves him from the clutches of death and Damien's response is, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's like he's so much like his dad, but extra cocky on top of that and he doesn't mind killing people. So as they continue through the labyrinth though, and just to remind you guys or for some of you who aren't familiar with what a labyrinth exactly is, like it's literally a maze or a jungle of sorts. And the Batman who laughs is set it up at different levels to where like the Riddler, he's all the way out on the far brim. And the way a labyrinth works, the further you get to the goal or towards the center, also the more difficult it gets for the different tests and trials that you either have to defeat or get past. And to me that makes it real interesting because you see when the different characters even though they split up, with Damon going by himself and meeting with Green Arrow, and later him and Green Arrow meet up with Harley Quinn and Killer Croc, it just goes to show you that certain matchups are more effective than individuals. And even though Damian Wayne is one of the most capable individuals out here, we're shown that he's still going to need the help of Green Arrow and everybody else in order to get through this. But that's one thing that I like about these crazy situations because it brings together these team ups that you wouldn't normally expect. And it's really great storytelling to how all these different issues come together because it breaks the monotony of good versus bad and it just gives you everybody versus the worst. But when Damien, Green Arrow, Harley Quinn and Killer Croc come to like the boss level of the Riddler's Labyrinth, they have to face off with him directly. And so keep in mind, like I mentioned before, the Labyrinth has different levels as far as difficulty, the outside being the most easiest part. And by easy, I mean just not as difficult. And that's specifically why the Batman Who Laughs put the Riddler on the outer brim. And that's something that we continue to see throughout the series as they go through to each level, the difficulty increases. But after a quick battle with the Riddler, they break him down out of his armor and they actually get the metal card that he had in his possession from the Batman Who Laughs. And once again, these aren't the only four that are in the Labyrinth. This group has been separated from the other Suicide Squad members and Damien has yet to find Nightwing, not to mention the other Titans that are also here too. And we'll catch up with the other members in just a minute. But skipping over to Challenger's Mountain, which is at the center of Gotham and also the current location of the Batman who laughs who's watching over everything he witnesses the Riddler's defeat and he's like okay now it's time to pull a wild card from the deck and this is where it's finally revealed to us that Dark Robin has been up here on Challenger's Mountain the whole time and just to be clear this Robin is actually the Batman who laughs son and they make it pretty clear here because when he steps out from the cave he's separate from the other Robins that are left on the chains and not just that but he looks significantly different than the other Robins that we've seen with the Batman who laughs previously but it's here that we find out that the Batman who laughs has been saving his son for this particular purpose and I can't help but to think that even though the Batman who laughs says that he's serving Barbatos that with all these different twists and tricks that he has up his own sleeve that he doesn't ultimately have a plan of his own that he wishes to execute outside of the grand scheme of things but when the group gets through to the next level which the Riddler said is to be colder and darker when they get there that's exactly what it is and Damien hears a voice yelling to him from a distance and he thinks it's his dad. But it's hilarious because it's not. It's actually Nightwing. And he's literally running his ass off like, yeah, he made it to the next level, but he's coming out like, you do not want to go in there. <laughs> but this is one of the cool things I was talking about. Like, Nightwing made it the furthest on his own. And a lot like Damien Wayne, you come to a certain point to where you still need help. So when he runs back and finds these guys, he finds a bit of that help that he needed. And this is a good thing because what originally started off as six different groups is now broken down to two. But jumping back to the other side, of Riddler's Labyrinth, you have the remaining members of the Suicide Squad finally meeting up with the other members of the Teen Titans. And as far as the Titans, like the only reason these guys are really here is because initially Damien said he was going to go alone. And Damien made it a good distance on his own up until running into Green Arrow who saved his butt. But with everybody else who's waiting here pretty much at the doorway or the entrance, they're being watched by Dark Robin. And my guess is with him seeing them there on the outside, and with the majority of them barely having scratched the surface of the labyrinth, it's like he goes after them first so they don't catch up with the others, giving the group as a whole a better chance to make it all the way through. But yeah, when he sets this attack on the outer brim, it starts to rain like a legion of Robins on top of these guys. It's crazy. And this is really just the beginning of what he has in store for everybody. But once again, what I say that I love about these wild team ups, cause like when Starfire is like Titans together, <laughs> Deadshot's just like, man, shoot these damn things. But Beast Boy, his response is the craziest because he's like, this is my worst nightmare, an army of Robins. Like I'm already pissed that Damien brought us here, but now we're gonna get killed by a whole bunch of them. And I kid you not, like going through these three or four tie-ins between your Teen Titans, Suicide Squad, uh, Nightwing, Green Arrow, like I've been reading these comics like at Starbucks and like laughing out loud. And I know people's looking at me like, what is he over there looking at? And I'm over there just like, oh my, my bad, my bad. But when Dark Robin leaves the gang to fight to their death outside the labyrinth, we find out that Robin also has his 
own Suicide Squad and Teen Titan team, all of which made Joker hybrids that these guys gotta face later. And they look sick. Like, I can't wait for us to cover that one. And we're definitely gonna come back to this before the end of this week, because I also wanna talk about Nightwing and how he ties into Barbados' plan. But that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. But yeah, man, like, now is the best time to be a comic book lover, because, like, everything is awesome right now. But I got links up for you guys to check out my other videos. Do squad up in the comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. Alright, later.